Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. In this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to set up the seashell procedural foliage box. I'm going to go ahead and add multiple array elements to my foliage box. Now in this project I'm going to be using STF3D project and this content contains 17 different shells. Unfortunately it does not have a foliage but it does has a static mesh. So what I'm going to do is filter out all the static mesh that are in this project. And I was actually wrong. It contains 40, not 17, but 40 different seashells. I'm going to go ahead, left click the bottom one and then scroll away to the top and hold shift and left click again to select them all. And then left click and drag into the foliage type. And once it adds all of the static mesh, it's going to convert them to the foliage type. I'm going to go ahead and drop them in. Once that's done, it's going to autosave all the data packages. And then what I can do is individually select individ each of those static meshes and save them as a foliage type. And it automatically picks up the folder it belongs to. And the following is a exactly same process for the rest of 39 seashells that I have in this foliage type. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video to about six times. So this is just the one of the processes that are repetitive, tedious, and pretty simple to follow. So once you save them all in the same process as I'm doing, you'll be able to then filter out all your foliage types in this project and then drop them into the foliage type object where I've added array elements for my procedural foliage box. Now as I'm doing this I'm also trying to picture how all these seashells going to be placed in the world and that is going to be based on the texture of my landscape and there's a couple changes that's going to be done in the future but as of right now it's only going to spawn on the sand, which means it's going to be spawned on the land surface above the water and also underwater. Now, I'll have to do some changes in the future, but as of right now, I'm going to stick with that. And I also want to make sure that they are spawned somewhat halfway into the sand, if you picture it being sunk in. Uh, from over time being in the sand and here I am just left click and clicking on each arrow to import all these foliage types for each of those array elements. I have added more of array elements to this foliage box. Now I have 40 of them like I'm supposed to. Go ahead and click save. And also other thing I was going to mention is trying to make them rotate a different angle. I'm going to go ahead and set up the foliage box over here and you can see that I've uh, scaled it up. I also turned off the allow BSP and static mesh. I've turned them off only now it's going to spawn on the landscape which is the sand and here is my island. It's about 20 plus square miles to get a comparison right there on the left half of the bottom screen you can see a dot that is actually a World War II Japanese plane that's been crashed so you can get a comparison of how big this landscape is and how deep the ocean is. And as of right now it's been turned off so I can show you everything. Now you can see that I've opened up all these foliage types and that's not what you want to do. Uh, if you want to fix them all at once you'd want to make sure you open them all at once and on the top left it says 40 foliage type instances. So what I'm going to do now is change the Z offset, that, that way they will spawn into the ground. I'm going to keep the line to normal so it spawns on the surface of the landscape. A random yaw is going to be turned on, the pitch right now is at zero. Just trying to play with numbers and see what I can come up with. And I'm going to go ahead and populate this landscape, I'm going to bring it up so that way my boxes at the right height. Let's go ahead and 
add a couple more changes here. So random pitch angle is going to be at 55. Uh, the drop slope is going to be at a 65 or so from 0 to 65. Now I also added the landscape layer and I'm naming it Dune, but it should be Dunes. I'll make sure the name is correct. Now the collision I set to 75, procedural uh, scale from 1 to 5. So you can see that it doesn't spawn because of the name is incorrect, it's actually Dunes. So let's go ahead and populate and place the procedural foliage. And that has been done. That's uh, one of the longest waits that you have to wait for if it's pretty big. So let's go ahead and press F11 to zoom in and you see the entire landscape. And here you can see now that the shells are spawning all the way through the entire landscape of underwater area that I've uh, created. And I didn't have to place them by hand, everything done by the engine. Let's go ahead and speed up the camera so I can get out of this uh, deep hole and get closer to the shore of the island. Let's go ahead and set the camera right here, slow it down to two, and kind of look around and see what we have around the shoreline. So you can see that these shells are in the random spots. They are rotated. Obviously, there's quite a lot of them. That, that's because it's only one texture, so there's going to be other changes done in the future, make them a little bit less sporadic, maybe even have clusters in the future, but it's a pretty basic um, setup. Now, the one thing I don't see is the starfishes, but uh, I'll have to either do the changes to that or see if I can have them spawn a little bit more frequently. So I've uh, added foliage tool folder and also one is called apply and one is called block and that is under my world outliner so that I can keep everything nice and organized so here is my ocean now let's go ahead and select my character that I have and I'm gonna turn off my Starting points with the pawn. I'm going to change that out of possess to disable so that way I can just play with the camera Set up the character. That was something that I was testing with the foliage for the palm trees You can see that on the right screen or on the right side of this viewport So let it load up real quick and then you'll be able to see the underwater of my ocean Let's go ahead and zoom it in and Looks pretty cool. I hope you guys like the video. I'll be making part two soon. And as always, I want to thank everybody for watching my YouTube channel. Thank you for all the subscriptions. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Click the notification bell button to be notified every time I upload a video regarding Unreal Engine and game development of the island. Until next video.